Today I'm going to be meeting with Bruce Chow, an internationally award-winning brand designer. Bruce was actually the youngest creative director to win the Red Dot Design Awards and she won her second one just last November. Together, we're going to be discussing how to build a successful brand. So Ruth, you've led your team uh, to win over 40 awards in the past three years from the States, from uh, the UK, Italy and more. Can you share with us your top tips to build a successful brand? First of all, uh, thank you Ines for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here to be sharing some of the experiences that I've had in the past that I hope can help entrepreneurs, business owners or even creatives to build a successful brand. And on the first three tips, I say the most important thing is to know yourself, to know your brand and to understand it to the very core. And the second, once you do, is to be able to whittle down uh, the key attributes of your brand um, to every single touch points. And the third is to have all of these touch points work collaboratively to create a um, holistic um, experience for your consumer. And a lot of clients would ask me, how do you do that? Like, how do you make sure that you understand your brand properly or that you have all your key attributes laid out um, that is unique to your brand? You know, traditionally, we look at the four Ps of uh, brand building and marketing mm -hmm. and in there we have first the product the place the price and the promotion mm -hmm. so those are the four P's to elaborate a little bit more the product is um, well your either digital physical or a service that you're trying to sell to your customer um, the second which is the place so traditionally you have very fixed avenues at which you can sell to your customers and third is the price self-explanatory but based on let's say SWOT analysis competitive analysis you know where your brand stands uh, in comparison to your competitors and you place yourself accordingly and the fourth is the promotion uh, promotion is marketing and advertising campaigns since then as we know uh, we have the technology we have digitalization we have social media marketing what I particularly love is the new study by Christopher Graves um, and he basically revolutionized the four P's into the four E's right so it's it's similar but it's adapted to our times for example from product it becomes experience so now it's no longer enough to just think of it as one physical product or one thing on its own you really have to design it as if it's the whole customer experience Absolutely. from how somebody comes across your product to how they are learning more about it to maybe considering the acquisition of your product mm -hmm. and then the actual product itself for example, delivery, customer service, and after sales care, for example. So how you structure or design the entire journey is what will create the brand experience, and that becomes the first pillar. The second, um, from place, has become every place. So as we know, or even as we speak, your customer could actually be online looking at your product or your services right now, this moment. So it's very important to understand all those touch points that would attract your key, clientele and um, to be able to funnel your messages, your brand messages through these appropriate channels. The third is price and that has evolved actually into exchange. So every consumer, us inclusive, um, want to know that when we pay for a product or a service that it is worthwhile. It is worthwhile for the exchange of value that they have in return. For different brands, the concept of value is, it varies quite differently. For example, activewear, you know, they're selling motivation, energy, um, challenges, and the ability to overcome challenges. For let's say wellness brands, it's all about the organic quality, the green, the social responsibility, taking care of yourself, self-care, self-love, that sort of theme for let's say travel or hotels um, it could be the concept of an escape or journey um, changing a frame of mind or a new perspective um, exploration for example luxury brands um, exclusivity style influence power things like that so depending on which brand or which sector you are or what personality your brand has um, it would communicate very different values to your consumer. So to be able to understand what your consumer 
values most, um, capture it and deliver it to them will make your brand a lot more successful. And that brings us to the fourth point, which is uh, from promotion, now it becomes evangelism. Evangelism essentially means uh, word of mouth. Basically, what happens is when you are, let's say reading online reviews, it varies from 32% to about 68% of how much you're influenced by what you read or opinions um, that you come across. This may seem like a little bit lower or a bit above chance, but what's really astonishing is if you look at the opinions of your friends and family, that's actually 72% to 90%. So you can imagine how much you know, the recommendation of a friend or family means to somebody on a, on a decision to purchase. is also why it gives rise to social media marketing because um, the power of the influencer is not really in their numbers or in you know, leading just, let's say, an aspirational lifestyle. It's the ability that they have to cultivate friendships with their followers. So the followers would feel like they know this person and therefore subsequently whatever she or he endorses, it has the same power as if a friend is recommending it to you. Absolutely agree. Okay. It's like nowadays I don't do any purchase without showing it to all my friends or yeah, my family. It's and so important. It to have feedback from them and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, it's all a, a kind of experience on Absolutely. its own. And Depending on these um, four pillars, basically, these four E's, if you grab your, let's say, top management, your brand team, your marketing team together, and you really map out and design these four pillars together to really communicate what your brand is about or what you are about as a founder, um, that is really the true recipe. The key to success, yeah. Yes, to build Absolutely. a successful brand, yeah. <laughs> really yeah. good tips. So as an entrepreneur, um, what could you share to other entrepreneurs who are watching us um, on how to actually build a sustainable business? Well, um, I think of life a little bit like a marathon um, and so is work. Um, it's really easy to um, give your 2000% into work, especially if you're passionate about it and you care very much about it. And I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, um, because we're usually high achievers like we want to do well in our field we want to make sure we deliver the best to our customers to our clients i used to focus too much into work that i probably neglected to have a very good work-life balance and throughout the years i found that actually the better you take care of yourself um, your life as a whole um, the more you actually have to give back to your work and it could come in a very um, different way for different people. It could be eating healthier, it could be sleeping a little earlier, it could be spending enough time with friends and family, um, paying attention to what you need. One thing that I particularly enjoy doing now, uh, I started doing it uh, this year actually, is to wake up very early. Um, I actually wake up at 6 a.m. most of the time and um, it helps to center my mind before everything else happens, before an email comes in, before a project changes, before you're pulled into so many different directions, I would give myself the time to stay centered within myself first. And I have found that um, after doing that, it, it, your entire attitude to whatever happens during the day um, significantly improves. And I think that um, for entrepreneurs, it's even more important because it's not just about the first two years. Absolutely. Right? It's, it's a it's long ride. Long, long <laughs> ride. Full of up and downs. Yes. And, and I agree with you. Sometimes you feel so overwhelmed with what's happening during the day. Having the strength and your inner strength really mm. um, to face that is important. Yeah. And spending mm. enough time to take care of yourself is so important. Having been in my 30s now, the goal or the finish line, so to speak, more times than before, you start to realize that actually the finish line or reaching your goal part is actually 5% of the whole journey. So if that's the only part that you really enjoy, you will not be enjoying life very much. The trick I think is to hack the system and to actually try to enjoy that 95% of the time. And by enjoying, I think the key thing is the work-life balance. So Ruth, I think you shared with us a lot of really good tips and your journey is really inspirational. I would love Thank to you. keep inspiration going. And Do you have any quote that you live by? One quote that I particularly um, 
enjoy and find inspiration from um, is to remember the days when you wish for what you have now. And I think it's very easy in our daily lives to be always looking to the future and planning and creating and solving issues. And it's always about what's to come next or how to improve or have the next best thing. Uh, what I find to settle me and ground me a little bit more is to remind myself that what you have right now in this present moment was actually something that you created way back then. And it's also important to enjoy the result of what you have right now. Absolutely. Um, Celebrate your own achievements. So <laughs> yes. Important. Yes. And to enjoy the present. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree with you. Thank you so much for sharing so many great tips. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank we you all so much. hope that you learn a lot and stay tuned for our next episode. Hope you enjoy this episode brought by our corporate partner Hubs, a premium women's fashion brand. If you want to join us, just visit few.community and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that already.